Ideal for light, medium, and heavy-duty industries, these next-generation systems have all the same features as our PureFlow ESM PAPR, plus more battery life, improved self-monitoring, lighter weight, and higher flow rate. To ensure their performance, the following guide provides basic information on their proper use and care. Prior to use, prepare the unit following these simple tasks outside the hazardous environment. First, charge the battery packs. To start, install the appropriate country power outlet adapter onto the charger. Next, connect the battery packs to the charger. Then plug it in and let the battery packs charge. Note, batteries can be charged either inside or outside of the helmet. To achieve maximum battery life, it takes three to four charge-discharge cycles, with the batteries being fully charged each time. The normal recharge time is two and a half hours. Always recharge the batteries following discharge, and if stored for extended periods, recharge at about 60 day intervals. Chargers should be placed in an area that is cool, well ventilated, free of combustible material, particulates, or other airborne contamination, and where it can be easily monitored. The LED will display the status of the charge. Yellow means the charge is initializing. Orange signals a fast charge is completed. Green with yellow flashes indicates a top-off charge. And solid green means a trickle charge is underway to keep the battery fully charged, but low enough to avoid overcharging. If the LED flashes red-green, do not use the unit. Unplug it and contact your distributor. Remember to always disconnect the charger from the power supply when not in use. With fully charged battery packs, simply insert them into the respirator on both left and right sides. Before first use, you'll need to install the filter or cartridge, but do not open the packaging ahead of time. Note, some units come pre-installed with a HEPA filter. Other units have filters or cartridges that need to be installed for initial use. To begin installation, twist the filter or cartridge clockwise to engage the thread, and then tighten it by twisting. Take care not to cross-thread the filter or cartridge. If the gap is uneven, the filter or cartridge must be removed and reinstalled as it will not function correctly. This is the correct gap between the filter or cartridge and the respirator once it's installed. Should you need to replace the filter or cartridge as indicated by the LED or your facility's change-out schedule, simply turn the unit off and repeat the installation procedure in reverse. Do not remove or replace the filter with the unit running. The LED will indicate when you need to replace the HEPA filter or combination HEPA filter cartridge based on reduced airflow when enough particles accumulate on the filter. However, because gases and vapors do not accumulate in a way that affects airflow, the LED does not monitor the chemical cartridge portion of a combination filter and cartridge. For the chemical cartridge portion, a changeout schedule is required. Before use, visually inspect the entire system and replace any missing or damaged parts. First, confirm that the battery packs are fully charged or that the charge is sufficient for the duration of the work period. If there are cracks or damage to the battery case, properly dispose and replace them. Next, visually inspect the neck cape material for damage. Check the operation of the neck cape toggle fastener. Check the neck cape attachment to the respirator chassis. Inspect the exhalation patch for contamination. Inspect the visors for scratches or other damage. Check the visor seal for damage. For respirators with lift-type visors, check the two visor pivot screws to ensure they're tight. And lastly, visually inspect the helmet shell for damage. For the Pure Flow PF50 ESM Plus, check the two visor securing screws and nuts and tighten or replace as appropriate. With the visual inspection complete and necessary repairs made, the respirator is now ready to use. First, make sure to turn the unit on, 
then don the respirator. If it's equipped with a neck cape, make sure to fully loosen its drawstring. The respirator can be used in conjunction with corrective spectacles and compatible earplugs or custom molded earplugs. The face shield must be down to receive respiratory protection. The PureFlow PF60 comes with the visor lock installed. In order to open the visor, you need to first remove the visor lock. Once donned, adjust the headband to achieve a snug, comfortable, and balanced fit prior to entering the hazardous atmosphere. To do so, first adjust the wearing height by adjusting the crown strap of the headband. This may be more easily accomplished by removing the headband from the respirator prior to first use. To remove the headband, release the locking clips on each side. Then, remove the crown comfort pad and adjust the crown strap until the top of the headband rests just above the eyebrows. When complete, be sure the locking clips of the headband are fully engaged. Be sure to replace the crown pad. For a secure fit, you may also adjust the circumference of the headband. To increase the circumference, press the center button and turn the ratchet adjustment knob counterclockwise. To reduce circumference, rotate the ratchet knob clockwise. Take care not to kink or distort the headband while making circumference adjustments. Lastly, to improve the forward and backward balance of the respirator, Position the headband on either the front or rear set of tabs on the mounting bracket. After the headband adjustment is complete, switch the unit on by either using the internal on-off switch located on the blower motor housing, or, if installed, the optional external on-off switch. Wait until the status LED has turned from red to green before entering the hazardous atmosphere. During use, the status LED will remain green if the unit is operating normally. If it flashes red and you hear a series of fast tones, this indicates low airflow or that the filter is not fitted. A slow flashing red light with two slow tones means the battery is low. If there's a red warning of any type, move to a safe area and properly doff the respirator as shown later in this guide. The online product instructions for use may be referenced for troubleshooting the issue. After use, do not remove or shut off the respirator until you've vacated the hazardous atmosphere. Fully loosen the neck cape drawstring by releasing the toggle fastener. Fully loosen the headband ratchet knob, as this may aid in removal. Doff the respirator and switch it off. Place the respirator in a suitable container if special decontamination procedures are required. Remember, in the power off state, there is no respiratory protection. If the face shield is kept down with the neck cape and face seal still in place, there will be a rapid buildup of carbon dioxide and oxygen depletion may occur. To ensure the respirator is operating at peak performance, follow the prescribed maintenance schedule in the instructions for use. Failure to follow the prescribed maintenance schedule and the use of unauthorized replacement parts or repair services may damage the respirator and void its warranty. Please refer to the limited product warranty for complete information. Transport the respirator in its original packaging or in the optionally available PureFlow carry bag to protect it from physical damage. The respirator should be stored in dry, clean conditions, away from direct sunlight and thermal radiation. Do not store rechargeable battery packs for prolonged periods outside the recommended temperature range. This might reduce their remaining capacity and number of charges. With proper use and care, these next generation systems will help enhance workplace performance with protection you can count on.